Okie dokie, smoky. Three round turn or three man team tournament. A uh, little bit of a before tournament setup. Uh, there was going to be 10 teams. We had list posted two weeks in advance. Six teams were out of town teams. Um, when it actually comes time for the tournament to happen, we've had, you know, just awesome freaking winter. Very, very mild and tame and nice. Uh, it starts blizzarding and starts dumping snow all over the pass and all the out of town players have to drive over a mountain range to get to us. The mountain range becomes a crap fest. Uh, so all six out of town teams do not come leaving just the four local teams. So, uh, we get there, we get here and we're like, Hey, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's do a three round event. And everyone is going to play. Each team is going to play each team because, um, you know, you're one of four teams, so you're going to play the other three teams, and that'll be all three rounds. And then um, one of the Kador players on one of the teams is like, hey, every team has a Kador player. And, you know, you can see the little sparkle in his eye. Um, and he's like, I challenge every Kador player, and we will see who's the best Kador player. And I'm just like... Yeah, I've got the best Kador player. Are you, are you freaking kidding me? I've got the best Kador player. So I'm down. Um, everyone else is like, is like oh, we've got the best Kador player. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the other Kador players, I don't know if they're actually into the idea of playing. Um, I don't know if they're actually into the idea of playing three rounds of nothing but Kador. But yeah, they're good sports about it. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Maybe I shouldn't be a team captain. Um, <laughs> so first round, um, a quick little uh, figure things out. How are we going to get our Kador players together? Okay, he'll drop. Um, um, I'll draw my Kador player first. Okay, cool. I draw my Kador player first. Uh, he, dr The team captain drops himself, Crucible Guard. Going into this pairing, um, Neither of my two players wanted to play against Crucible Guard, and I feel fine in a Crucible Guard. Um, unless it's a really janky, weird ja lock jack list with lots of Tauros, Virus 2 just handles Crucible Guard pretty well in my somewhat limited experience, like five or six games against Crucible Guard. He just seems to come out significantly ahead. Uh, so... Um, we talk a little bit and we're ready to get into this thing. He drops Baldwin. I drop Viros too. Um, he has Sylvester's his other pair. I, it's Sylvester Vulcan. Um, so I don't want to drop Ron just because the Vulcan being in there with the ability to get rid of polarity shield and the Vulcan out threatening Helios. Um, I think Helios just dies to Vulcan and some gunshots and chip damage and that's really awkward for me um it, it probably it can work out a lot of other ways i just in my head i didn't really like that and i feel like ron or Vi virus just does a lot better so he drops uh baldwin and um off we go he just wants to play baldwin he's got double rock men he's got the uh uh, I can't remember if they're Salt Troopers or Shock Troopers. One men and one max. And he's got a Vulcan, Dragon's Breath, Rockets, and two Trancers. So, he gets up the board pretty dang fast. And um, that's how Crucible Guard does it. When you've got Rocket Man and um, a freaking Speed 6 Colossal. So, um, the game for me pretty much boils down to this magical little spot right here. That's where Imperatus is going to go. And then um, the rest of my army can do whatever it wants because if anything comes within 11 inches of that spot in Pathfinder from the objective, Imperatus is going to go kill the Colossal. And that's the only real thing that kind of feel like threatens me in the list. So, um, yeah, and I just kind of move the rest of my stuff up uh, wherever it wants to go. I put a Griffin over here and, you know, maybe it'd be cool if his Colossal comes and kills a Griffin and then it makes it easier for me to kill him. I don't take his gun seriously. Which, you know, I if you're a Crucible Guard player, you can you can just reach through this screen and slap me across the face. Um, if you want to, I deserve it for that statement. Uh, so yeah, moving on. 
I grab that one little magical cool spot that Imperatus is going to sit in. And off we go, because from that spot, I can platform launch myself pretty much into anywhere. Um, I'm going to have to start sneaking around here. So, uh, this is this is weird. He um, Baldwin is going to feet and get in range of these three jacks. He's putting prey on this griffin first. All these guys come over here with the speed, not the defense um, order, and they start throwing gravity bombs on the griffin. Um, oh, first, before that, I'm sorry. They're very important order of activations. Vulcan comes up to here and gets out rust on this whole pile and this griffin. Then all the rocket men come over here with gravity bombs and they kill the griffin. Um, and then they reposition into annoying and in the way places. Prey rotates to this griffin right here. Um, and then all these other rocket men come over here and they kill that griffin. So I'm down two griffins, but the Vulcan is right here. Um, and then all the rocket men repo into my way. Um, an assault trooper set up the assault, or I can't remember. The, you can, you know what, Crystal Guard player. I'm not gonna say your name, but you can just slap me. You can you can slap me pretty good next time you see me uh, for not remembering if they're assault troopers or shock troopers because it's just embarrassing. I'm embarrassing myself. But yeah, they set up in this area right here because um. The idea is, is to kill Imperatus when Imperatus comes to kill the Vulcan. And here we are. Here is uh, the table condition. Yep, yep. So, basic uh, basic plan. Have Iros come up and bop these guys and then get out of the way and pop feet. Then just start bopping guys, bopping guys, uh, bopping guys. Uh, Discordia is going to charge into that guy. Be careful not to give them dodge to mess up my charge. And then if he needs to, I can either send a Griffin if it's really close or send Imperatus and sidestep him back. Uh, Discordia rolls well, um, doesn't kill it. So Imperatus goes up, kills it on the charge attack roll, and then starts bopping some of these guys and sidesteps back to here so that they can't shoot it to death. Um, Viros is under feet, and then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to learn from my game against my Kador player in the pra tournament practice. Remember that um, if I'm going to go up on attrition, I need to not get shot to death. That's pretty important. Um, I also need to make sure I don't lose on scenario. So I'm going to pop feet and my feet, the whole purpose of my feet is to prevent myself from dying and is to um, be able to contest scenarios. So if he wants to try and, uh, and this is how I end things. Basically, if he wants to try and uh, get th score this zone, um, he's going to have to put Baldwin over into it, which is unlikely. And also, Imperatus can then just walk right into that zone, basically. Or this Arcanist can walk into that zone. Or something can walk into that zone to contest it. Over here, he scored one point last turn on this flag, so no matter what, he's scoring another point. That's automatically a two-point lead. I was not able to clear this and get a solo there, just the way things kind of worked out. I don't... I mean, it kind of sucks. Um, Virus is on a one camp with deceleration with this shield guard and this shield guard. This guy right here is just a hair out. So he's looking at this and he's like, I think it's assassination time because I lost my Vulcan. Probably regrets losing the Vulcan uh, for what happened. And I think he should have played Ring Around the Rosie with me a little bit longer. But um, he has accepted his position in life and comes up with an assassination plan. The assassination plan basically mounts up to um, Mr. Tacticianing uh, Baldwin walking over here and shooting some shots at Viros. I think he probably, and then putting Snipe onto this unit over here. I think he, if he can, I can't remember exactly how his orders works. If he can get the additional one to uh, hit, I think that would have been better since hitting was his biggest issue. Um, Cause I shield guard his uh, acid. No, I take his acid cannon. The dice roll is kind of poor. Um, and then I shield guard his next gun over to the Gorgon. And uh, I think, if I remember right, he might have even missed one of the two and drifted onto an Arcanist, killed the Arcanist, and then I bring a Griffin within three of him. 
I think is what happened. Something, something we're really funky there with Baldwin, like he rolled bad or something. Um, and an Arcanist died to blast damage. Uh, not my force barrier Arcanist, but my just regular Arcanist. And then uh, all these guys come in and start doing the gravity bombs on Virus 2. One or two of them hit, it gets shield guarded. Um, one of them misses, and no, I don't think any of these guys missed it and drifted that far. Because they can only drift like two inches. But yeah, our Virus 2 is pretty fine still. So then these guys... Uh, one of them sacrificed movements. The other two walk, and they take shots at Virus 2. I sh he, they hit with one or two or something like that, and I shield guard to my last. One of them misses and kills this Arcanist over here. Um, so I find myself in the situation where that shield guard's used, that shield guard's used, and that shield guard's used. So I move Virus 2 three inches over to here where this dead Arcanist is, and now I have two new shield guards. Um and Baldwin players like my freaking AOEs, man. And uh, then these guys all over here um, start walking around to get the angles and shooting at Viros. Dice just don't really work out. Um, I mean, it's not great odds, but there, you know, there should be a little bit of damage here and there. Uh, Viros is on like three damage and uh, has used his shave at this point. Um, these, then all these guys come over here and get the plus two speed order and they all start throwing vi gravity bombs onto virus. Some in the back does a little bit of damage, but misses and not a whole lot happens. So I'm still alive. And here we are. This is, this is what the pile of stuff looks like. Uh, so this turn is for me pretty simple. Oh, 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 something important. Uh, this Dragon Breath rocket drifted an AOE onto Virus 2. I think it missed, but they uh, caught Virus 2, and that's how he killed this first Arcanist over here. And that's how I started. I got the uh, shield guard in range of Virus 2, this this one that was over here. So this turn is pretty simple for me. Um, Gorgon's going to go over here to contest. Um, Griffin's going to bop guys over here to build synergy. Virus 2 is going to walk over here, bop those guys to build synergy. Um, these other griffins are going to start bopping guys, uh, build up synergy and stuff. And Imperatus is going to charge this assault trooper, getting Pathfinder objective, and then go kill Baldwin. It'd be really, really nice if I could take Discordia, walk him, take some free strikes, and then do a spray into Baldwin, because I'll be mad 11, and he'll be defense 14, and I'll need fours to hit. If I hit him with Discordia spray, then the only thing that misses is double ones, which I miss anyway, and that sounds a lot more reliable. I mean, yeah, needing fours to hit is pretty dang reliable, but um, I'm actually not even all in then, because then all of his crap is engaged to Imperatus and stuck there with Imperatus, um, which is hard to get out of and get away from. So that actually wouldn't even be the end of the world anyways. Um, Virus 2 put up deceleration and it was on a one camp again. But yeah, um, anyhow, I back to Discordia taking a free strike from a Trancer. He just has smite. So if, Vi if Discordia takes a free strike from a Trancer, he might just go smite it all, all over the top of all these dudes and get... Freaking messed up, man. So I decide not to do that. And Discordia just beats on a few Rockamen and stuff. Doesn't beat on any... Ro oh, at one point a Gorgon needs to back all the way over to here to take a Spray 8 at this guy. I make sure that the Spray 8 does not clip any of these guys because I do not want them dodging in front of Imperatus and screwing this whole freaking thing up. Because um, that would be absolutely hilarious. And um, I want to not have Imperatus use this whole freaking activation to kill Rocketman. So yeah, uh, things work out. Imperatus charges this dude and then like maybe second or, uh, or third attack kills Baldwin on a three, two camp. Um, he had a total of four attacks on Baldwin. I think it was the second or the third. Uh, but yeah, that's how that goes when you're dice plus five or something awesome like that or dice plus six. I think he's a 15, 16. Uh, so yeah, dice plus six. Yep. Uh, good game. Enjoyed it. Um, I think the Vulcan going to here was a little bit over eager. I think, um, 
it could have achieved the same result by um, getting to say uh, right here-ish and uh, shooting rust right there and shooting rust right here. And if done correctly, I wanna go back to this, and this is this is just little stupid stuff. If done correctly and you kill this and you kill this and you're sitting like right here somewhere, uh, Imperatus, I don't know if Imperatus kills a Vulcan all by himself. I have no doubt he janks it up, but if he doesn't kill it all by himself, the Vulcan has the ability to make it so the Phoenix field doesn't happen because it can make it so you, I, it has basically entropic force. I can't remember if it's called entropic force, but yeah, that means uh, Imperatus can just die to a Vulcan or something. And that changes this. I think that's that's a that's a better way of playing the game because, I mean, obviously, I'll have Discordia following it up to go kill it, but um, it's a much better attrition position because it's going to be about two or three turns of me drowning in rocket men, just killing them all down and them not really doing a whole lot. Um, I don't know where the game goes if that happens. I think I'm still favored and I think I'm still fine, but I think that works out for attrition better. Um, I think this Vulcan was a little bit over over eager. Um, and maybe the spot is actually something more like right here. And then you shoot at Imperatus and have the Rust AoE um, get on to this Griffin right here. I could also just shield guard it away. But yeah. And then you're also, that, that Vulcan would be protecting, um, protecting uh, Baldwin. Those are my thoughts on the game. I I like this list I, the, better than the other Baldwin list. The Rocketmen actually get a pretty good amount of work done with Prey and Rust and um, the uh, Withering Humor, which I don't know what's so funny about Withering Humor. It just sounds cruel and horrible, but I guess it's funny. So, yeah, uh, that's round one. Uh, we won all three of our round one games. Kador player beat the Kador player on his way to becoming the greatest. And um, um, our, my, um, our mercenary player played cross two into Krios three with a bunch of horsies and the divine inspiration horsies. And it was a really, really weird game. I was looking over out of the side. At one point, all the horses were on the sides of the board and I thought they were dead. They were alive. They were just like weird. Um, I remember seeing a massive pile of steelheads and I remember um, some weird soul mechanic messing with cross and I remember cross winning. Because the trap of the cross list is you look at it and you think, how do I kill lots of steelheads when that's not actually how you beat the list? It helps to get into the list, but um, it's not, it's just a part of how you beat the list. You need a way to dig out Alexia and um, bully cross and not get assassinated by cross or just not care about steelheads. That's the other option. So yeah, um, thank you for watching. We are moving on to round two.